Amen. Let's give him a hand clap as he comes. Yeah. Fire up, Elder. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fire up, Elder. Fire up, Elder. Amen. Amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. No appetite is straight on tree. Hallelujah. Straight on tree. Amen. No food of soup. Hallelujah, God. No celery sticks. Hallelujah, Papas. Hallelujah, God. Amen, amen. No salad. Straight meat. Hallelujah, amen. You may be seated, amen. Protocol has been set fast and has prayed, amen. Today is Youth Sunday, amen. I want to see one youth in here today, amen. Hallelujah, God. Amen, amen. I was looking for some middle schoolers and some elementary schoolers and some toddlers, amen, but some of them might be under the weather, whatever the case may be, and different things, amen, but that's all right, amen, and amen, we still going to move on, hallelujah, God, I thank God, amen, for everyone here on today, amen, and speaking of my youth, I told them a couple of weeks ago, I said, you know, I'm preaching on Fifth Sunday, I need you to get a scripture ready, boy, all right, amen. amen, so you can uh, have some, hallelujah, God, and you know, he, Elijah also, because he's uh, playing basketball now, he's on the the JV slash B team because he's in the ninth grade. And I've noticed now a lot of kids be writing things on their shoes mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I noticed on his shoe, he has, Whom Shall I Fear? Mm -hmm. And granted, every Sunday he come in here and he stand like a statue. He don't move. <laughs> he don't say nothing, don't do nothing. But he hears. Yes, he does. Don't ever count for that because our youth may not be moving and jumping all around. But when you come here enough, mm -hmm. you go hear stuff. Whom shall I fear is on his shoe. All right. Who would have thought that? I never would have thought he probably would write something like that. But he's heard that somewhere. And more than likely, he's heard that here in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, Amen. God. All right. Even years ago, as much as DJ used to sit in the back and don't do nothing, and he would sit still like a statue as well. Mm -hmm. When he was in the eighth grade, he had on his shoe. Mm -hmm. I can do all things. All right, now. Yeah. He had that. Yes, he did. I had never heard that boy utter that out of his mouth. But he wrote that on his shoe. All right. Mm -hmm. Never discount when you see the youth up in here. They might not be doing nothing, but they hear it. Yes. Don't think it's all for nothing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I was just saying something about when we was on our way up here. Mm -hmm. And I was the same way. I didn't say much in church, didn't do nothing. Used to beat the drum and whatnot. But before then, be church every Sunday. Wouldn't say nothing, but you would hear certain things every Sunday. <coughs> like I would tell my son when we were dismissing my wife and them apostolic churches, every time when they dismissed, they would say, and I didn't know it was scripture until I started reading it for myself. Whenever, whenever they would dismiss, they would always say, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. I heard that from the time when I was this big to hear and whatnot, and it would just drill him. I knew what they was gonna say, mm -hmm. and whatnot. Even though I never said it, but I heard it so much. Mm -hmm. So yes, our youth they do hear, they do pay attention. That's why I say we have to lead by example with our praise and worship, that's right. because they are the future. They are the ones that's gonna be preaching and teaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. And if we are preaching and teaching it right, they won't have no choice but to do it right. That's right. Hallelujah! They won't have no choice but to walk right. And to do it because they see us. And sadly, it's a lot of foolishness that's going on in the house of the Lord. And you see that. All right. They see that a lot. That's why it's, it, it behooves you not to act just one way in here, but to be at home in the same way. That's right. Hallelujah, God. Because I can't get up in here and preach. And then my son is looking at me, but you don't act like that at home. That's right. Hallelujah, God. All right. I see you when you sneak a beer every now and then and go out in the backyard and smoke a cigarette or something like that. See, how that be? How would that be? You know, I'm sitting up here saying, don't do that, but I'm doing that. That's right. I'm sitting there saying, don't be using foul language, but every time he hear me, when I get mad, I say something. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, God. He can't say that because I don't do none of that foolishness. All right. Hallelujah. With the help of the Holy Ghost. It's not me on my own. But I'm just letting you know, it is doing something. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that. You had the football game, they have a DJ at that one some of the games and whatnot. And, yeah. and the music be pumping out there, that music be loud. Boy, all the players be out there, boy, they be out there bouncing around. <laughs> what do you think Elijah be doing? Just standing there. <laughs> 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 he be bouncing around like all the rest of them out there. That ain't me. 
That's all you hear him saying that everybody be bouncing around. That's what could have been me. I would have been out there bouncing too because I know how I was when I was that age. Amen. You can tell all the kids they be out there bouncing, but that's just him. That's just how he do. You know, he just, uh, you know, he just, you know, like the jolly green giant. He just stand there and just mind his own business Amen. and whatnot. Not saying that he don't like the music or nothing. That's just not him. He don't do that. Hey, man, hallelujah, God. But his daddy was something else when I was his age, though. Hallelujah. I was, I was very active when it came to stuff like that. Hallelujah, God. But I thank God there's a word for the day, man. I'm looking for some more youth to be here on today, but hallelujah, there still is a word on today, man, because the adults can always get something out of it as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Coming out of the book of Psalm, amen, or 105. And then I'll be headed over to Matthew in verse 5. Hallelujah. I mean, in chapter 5, after I read uh, Psalm 105 and verses 1 through 4. Hallelujah, God. Bless your holy name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The last Sunday of the year, as Pastor said, amen. Just had an awesome leadership conference, amen. Hallelujah. A lot of information, amen. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 105. The very first verse says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. It says, Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of his wondrous works. Hallelujah, God. Are we talking about our wonderful God that we serve? Hallelujah, God. Are we making known his deeds among the people? Are we telling people how good the Lord is? Hallelujah, God. See, I was going to... Tell my youth in school, like you, you're telling your friends and your and so forth and your and your classmates how good the Lord is. Hallelujah, God. Amen. When you make a hundred on the test or a ninety some, Amen. You can say the Lord is good. Amen. Hallelujah, because He helped me study in the mighty name of Jesus. He gave me remembrance. Amen. As I studied this and it, it came back to my remembrance. Amen. And it reflected on the test that I just took and I passed it with flying colors. Hallelujah, God. God is good in the mighty name of Jesus. It says, talk ye of his wondrous works. Even grown folks, are we telling people about the Lord? Hallelujah, God. Are you telling family members? Right. Are you telling friends? Strangers even. Hallelujah. How good God is in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. In verse 3 it says, glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Hallelujah, God. Are you seeking the Lord, saints of God? And verse 4 says, seek the Lord and his strength. Mm -hmm. Seek his face forevermore. Mm -hmm. You know, in Isaiah 55 and 6, it says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Hallelujah, God. And you always hear that when, see, the Bible tells you to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. It tells you to seek him. And when you're seeking something, you're looking for something. That's right. That's right. But I've said this before, I haven't said it in a while, that when, Sometimes when people go to jail and when they get out and they might have given their life to Christ while they was in there and people say, and he or she may say, I found the Lord. But I heard people downplay it and say, you didn't find nothing. You were the one that was lost right. and whatnot. But he say, the Lord said, like, no, you didn't find nothing. Mm -hmm. But see, the word tells us to seek him now. Right. It says seek him while he may be found. That's right. So we shouldn't be telling people like that, you didn't find nothing. That's right. The Lord found you because you were the one that was lost. But the Bible tells you that's right. to seek him. Amen. So that's wrong if you're telling people that. That's right. When somebody say, I found the Lord, praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because the word says so. Why he is found, why he can be found. That's right. Because see, God ain't going nowhere. Yes, we are lost. That is true. Before we accept him as our Lord and Savior. But the word says to seek him. It says it right here in verse 4. It says, seek the Lord okay. and his strength. It says, seek his face forevermore. That's right. We should always be looking and searching. Hallelujah, God. It's just like I tell you to stay hungry, stay thirsty. That's right. Speaking of which, see, go to, go to Matthew right quick. And before we go, yeah, yeah, go to the fifth chapter. So I like when it says that to the Beatitudes. Mm -hmm. When it tells you that. I believe it is in verse 6. It says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So if you're looking for something, God go give it to you. Amen. It says, Stay hungry. Don't the Lord, don't the word say, Oh, taste and see. Hallelujah, God. It tells you to stay hungry. Stay thirsty. 
That's why he says, I am the living water. I am the bread of life. We should stay hungry. We should always stay seeking after the Lord. Hallelujah, God. I love the, the Beatitudes because a lot of times they tell you that you are blessed with these things. And it says, blessed are the poor in spirit for, for theirs, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit, those that are not uh, proud. Hallelujah, God. Stay poor, stay humble in the mighty name of Jesus. It says, the kingdom of heaven is yours. Say, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Hallelujah, God. See, all of this is good news in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. We just did the thirst and the hunger. It says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Amen. It's sad if you can't obtain no mercy. All right. We are supposed to be merciful. God had mercy on us. All right. We should have mercy on others. Amen. Just the what if factor. What if he didn't have mercy on you? Mm -hmm. What if he did decide to leave you out there? What if he did decide not to call you and decide to leave because everybody can't be saved, saved. Right. Everybody's not going to be saved. There's only a few people that God has chosen to serve him. Everybody's not going to be saved, saints of God. Everybody's not going to make it in. All right. So thank God mm -hmm. for the mercy that he had. Thank God that he chose you to reign with him forever. All we have to do is just stay in it because we're going to be tried every day. And especially our youth while they're in school. Because I'll be talking about some in a few minutes about how we're supposed to love our enemies and all that. Because see, the youth, as we all know, we've all adults. We've been teenagers. And we know how cruel kids can be with all the teasing and all the different things. And I can't stand her. I don't like him. He thinks he all that. She thinks she all that just by the clothes that they wear. All right. You don't like them because of maybe how they act and whatnot. And see, we can't have our youth like that. Amen. Not the ones that go to church every day. They should know better. We see on the news all the time with, with children sadly are teasing one another and, and killing folks and bringing guns and different things to school. Shouldn't no child that be in church every Sunday and then come to Bible study have no weapon at school. That's right. None whatsoever. Talking about for protection and whatnot. Mm. They should know they should have protection. They should know they are covered by the blood. Amen. Hallelujah God. Parents pray over the children every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Because the schoolhouse is not safe. We think it is. We just have that mentality, you know, that they're around adults and different things and whatnot. They ain't going to let that happen. But yet when you see on the news, different things. They done locked the school down because they done found a gun and all of this type of stuff. We got to pray over these children, saints of God. They are youth, like I said. They are the future, but we need them right now. And we need to keep them in the house of the Lord as much as possible. Because society is pushing on them and it's alright to do certain things. Hallelujah, God. It's alright to have two daddies. It's alright to have two mommies. And we have to let them know that still yet that is wrong. Amen. Hallelujah, God. We got to let them know that it is not okay to do certain things. Hallelujah, God. We got watch night coming up. Right. Hallelujah, God. How many people go be in church on Tuesday night? Yet when they have Columbia famously hot and all kind of concerts and stuff going on downtown. <laughs> Hallelujah. All the news, all the media, that's all they're talking about. Ain't nobody on the media talking about watch night. They're all talking about going downtown to famously hot. And you know me, I say it every year that hell is famously hot also. Amen. I always put that out there on watch night, that night. So I tell them, I tell them, I say, be careful. Y'all going out there. But hell is famously hot also. Because that's where people go be. All right. I know where I used to be at on December the 31st. I know where I used to be at, that's for sure. Because one thing about the club, they will get extra money out your behind on that night. <laughs> it might usually cost $5 to get in. They charge you 15 on, on New Year's Eve. All right. And $20 and all that type of mess. But I still used to be up in there. Hallelujah, God, because that's where I wanted to be at. Uh -huh. Thank God for change. Hallelujah, God. Because yes. anything can happen. Hallelujah. What better place to be than to be in the house of the Lord starting off on the new year? Right. Hallelujah, God. And see, we have to promote that. Amen. We have to promote that on watch night because people, because New Year's Eve is famous for parties. They're going to have it all on TV when they drop the ball up in New York and all that. Thousands of people is out there in the streets when they can be in the house of the Lord. But that's where they choose to be. All right. But yet, some of those very same people, you never know, the next following year of God spare their life will be in the house of the Lord. Because I used to be one of them. 
Hallelujah, God. So change can happen. Amen. Yeah. It's not a lost cause when you see all of that. When you see all of them people talking about they are going to party, it's not a lost cause. <clears throat> we have to pray for them, saints of God. That's right. Because you was out there too. That's why we sing the song, Somebody Prayed For Me, Had Me On Their Mind, Took A Little Time. Hallelujah, God. Somebody prayed for you. Now look at you now. So let's keep that in mind with the youth. Hallelujah, God. Amen. Verse 8 in uh, chapter 5 of uh, Matthew, and it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, right. for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah, God. See, now that's some good news, saints of God. The pure in heart. Who don't want to see God? But you're not going to get there unless your heart is pure. Hallelujah. Right. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Hallelujah, God. And we have to once again continue to drill that in. Set that example in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. And when you come into the later verses in verse 5, <coughs> In verse 43, you have heard that it's been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Now what kind of saying is that? To hate your enemy. That's why he said you've heard that. I tried to look that up one time. There's no way in here, but Jesus is making a point. Obviously, that was a saying back in the day. Back then. Love your neighbor, but hate your enemy. Mm -hmm. But see, he about to flip that. That's right. Because, see, that's so natural to hate and dislike somebody who don't like you. All right. That's just natural to do. That's just our flesh. Because that seems right. You don't like me, so why should I like you? All right. All right. Hallelujah, God. See, nobody said it was going to be easy. See, when you follow Christ, you got to do things a little bit different. That's yes, right. I do. See, and I'm going to tell you right now, this right here, if this next verse is a, a problem that believers, non-believers have. See, this is right here. See, I be seeing stuff like this on social media. Mm -hmm. They say, how in the world, they say, can you, 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 you follow something like this? Who tells you to love your enemies? Mm -hmm. I heard somebody say that. Who tells you, how can you love somebody that don't love you? Well, see, we as Christians, that's what we do. Because, see, in verse 44 it says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. All right. See, that's coming from Jesus. That's written in red. Mm -hmm. He said, you have heard this, the hate your enemies me, but I'm telling you. No, you don't do that. Right. You got to love them too. How do you think Jesus felt? Being lied on and beat on all night long. Nailed to a cross and all of that type of stuff. And he still told the Father to forgive him. And he's telling us to do the same. Yes. You see, that's when it comes to, they always talk about how it's, the Bible is written by the white man and all of that because they use the Bible to detain black folks. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. They say that that's what they use. They use it to detain you so you can get walked over and trampled on. And they'll use a scripture like this to say, this is the proof that I have for that. Who in the world, how are you going to love somebody that beat you down? That's what they say. Mm -hmm. And see, people see that type of foolishness. And there's people out there spewing that type of hate out there like that. And yet we're trying to draw people to come into Christ. But you got that in your ear. How are you going to love somebody that hates you? All right. See, that type of stuff. You got to learn that once you come into the house of the Lord. So nobody says that's easy. Mm -hmm. But you got to get that in your heart. Hallelujah, God. Nobody says that's easy to do. But you do it. We just seen it. Remember, it was all on TV. And we talked about it before about... Remember the white lady that says she, she broke into the wrong apartment and killed a guy in the house and all that type of stuff and the man still yet hugged her in the courtroom and all that and the judge came down and hugged her and a lot of black folks lost their mind about that. Yeah. They lost their mind about that. How in the world you go hug somebody that killed your own brother? But he forgave that young lady for that. And she sit behind bars as we speak but nevertheless he still yet hugged her and forgave her. That took a lot for him to do that. There's a lot of Christians that wouldn't have did that. Right. A lot of them wouldn't have did that. Not saying they would have had hate in their heart and whatnot. I ain't saying that you have to do something like that. It's understandable because your emotions are still running high. That's your blood. That's your sibling. Mm -hmm. Understand them. I understand that. But what he did, you don't see that too much. Dylan Roof, when they say we forgive him, we have to kill nine people in the house of the Lord. 
Say, how in the world can you forgive somebody like that? That's what we do as Christians. That's right. The Bible says it right there in verse 44. Nobody says that easy. We have to teach our children not to hate. That's right. Hallelujah, God. Not to hate. And we can't be spewing that out of our mouth, that you hate somebody. I can't sit around my son and say, I hate the President of the United States. Right. Come on, come on. I can't say that. Because if I hate him, then he going to hate him. That's right. Or he'll hate other people. Hallelujah, God. I can't do that. But instead, I pray for the man. And he's not the only one. We have to do that, saints of God. Mm -hmm. Bless your holy name. Doesn't the Bible tell us we have to pray for those that are in, 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 in authority? Mm -hmm. We have to do that. We have to do that. No matter what kind of rhetoric they're putting out there, what kind of foolishness, no matter acts that they do, we have to do that, saints of God. Right. You can't pray for everybody and just leave him out there. He has a soul, too. That's right. He has a soul too, just like you had a soul. When you were running around here cussing out folks and carrying on, somebody was praying for you. Hallelujah, God. When I was out here clubbing and, and drinking and throwing up and all of that, somebody was praying for me. Thank God. Invite me to church. And thank God at least that I would go when I would get invited. But if I didn't get invited, in bed I was on Sunday morning. Knew better, should have been in the house of the Lord. But no, when you should have hit nursing a hangover, you don't feel like end up going nowhere. Wow. And like I said, if you invited me, I tried to table that a little bit on the night before because I knew I had to go to the house of the Lord the next day. Like I said, a whole year in Korea, one Sunday I went to church. Out of all the 50, about 50 some Sundays I was over there because I got invited one time. And that's the time that I went. Right. Now my roommate had a VCR of, of Willie Neal Johnson. Uh, and then he had a Willie Neal Johnson, and we he would put that in on Sunday mornings, and, and he'll play some gospel music on the on the V on the VHS. Now you know we had VHSs back then. You millennials don't know nothing like that. <laughs> there weren't no DVDs. He had a VHS, and we popped that in, and we listened to a little gospel music on that Sunday morning a little bit. And he would go to church from time to time, but but I would, and whatnot. But we have to, saints of God. Come on. Verse 44, you don't hear too many people preach that a lot. Mm -hmm. Speak on that. But we have to pray for our enemies. That's right. Yeah. And our youth need to hear that. Because youth can grow up to be so hateful. Girls have a tendency to be jealous of other girls because they feel that they're more prettier than they are. They have better hair or <coughs> their mother let them wear some makeup, but I can't wear no makeup at night. Make her more prettier than me. We got to let our children know that they are somebody and you are beautiful. Amen. You don't have to have all of that on if need be. But it's up to the mothers how they do that with their daughters and stuff. Some let them wear it and some don't. And I guess it's up to the mother. But we still got to let our girls know and our young men know that they are somebody. Because the world mess around and tell them that they're not. You see images on TV all the time that's not very portraying of, of our culture sometimes. In a negative light. Girls, you got to let them know it's more than just shaking your behind all the time when you see that stuff. It's more to it than that. That's why there are some positive images on Facebook. You see a whole bunch of black girls that just graduated from college and they say, dog, these are all doctors. And they say, you won't see, this won't get too many likes because they're not half naked and whatnot. I like to like stuff like that and put a heart by that because that's very positive. You see a bunch of brothers in a huddled up and they, be, and they have on these scrubs. And what not, these are all going to be uh, pediatricians uh, and doctors and all of that type of stuff. Are uh, they all black uh, graduating? There's certain schools in, in Chicago, you always hear that negative stuff, and they got school for boys and whatnot with a 100% graduation rate. All of them going to college and getting scholarships and whatnot. But see, a lot of stuff like that don't get spread around. All right. See, that's positive. So there are some positive things that are going on. Hallelujah, God. They are showing like young black boys and girls, 15 years old, getting accepted to colleges already and stuff. That's positive. That's good images and our black kids need to see that. It's all, not all negative. Hallelujah, God. And how some of them are making uh, businesses and starting businesses as teenagers and making money. Hallelujah. Positive things that our youth is doing. That's why we got to encourage them. I always say to be business owners. Be business minded. To own your own business someday. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, God. To be better than what your parents was. To strive to be better. Hallelujah, God. 
So I was going to do, what is it that you like to do? Because if football and basketball is not there, what are you going to do now? Right. What do you have to fall back on? That's it. Hallelujah, God. I said, you mean your mama not going to be disappointed if you don't make it in that? As long as you got an education, that's what we are proud of. And you're doing something. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Don't matter if you go to a, a big school or not. I don't care you can get a scholarship to Allen, South Carolina State. Well, me and your mama still be proud of you. Right. It ain't got to be a big time college that be on TV all the time. You can go to Benedict as far as I'm concerned. Anything. That's a historical black college, Allen. We'll be glad for you to be there. Glad for you to be there. They don't want, right. They're the only one that offer you a scholarship. Then praise God. <clears throat> no money coming out of our pocket. Let the school pay for it. All right. All right. That's all I always say. I said I'm not <coughs> working myself in the ground to pay for no college education. Get it done in the classroom and let the school pay for it. Yes. Hallelujah, God. Yes, Lord. Or if you get there on an academic or athletic scholarship, the school still gonna pay for it. Hallelujah, God. But let the school pay for it. Always encourage, encourage your youngsters, amen, hallelujah, God. Can I say, because he's 15 and time is winding down now, so he ain't no baby no more. You got to stay on him about certain things, hallelujah, God. Okay. Hallelujah, God, because he, he going to be a young adult here in a few. That's right. A young adult. It was easy back when you was in middle school and elementary school. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell him, I said, now you got to start winding down what you go do with your life and whatnot. Never forget God. Always give God the glory. Never forget. I say, even if you do make it to be a millionaire, don't forget the one that helped you along the way. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Go to the barber shop and throw them a little money. They cut your hair since you was a little boy. <laughs> At half the price. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Jackson was a good man. Ever since my wife met him some years ago, him and DJ, he only charged them five dollars to cut their hair. All them years. And it's like it's like twelve dollars for a haircut. All right. All I tell them that. I say it's people like that you don't forget them when you make